Self-esteem parenting 19, making Shabbos a fun and exciting place to be for our children. When I practiced law in Toronto and a client would come into my office, I would call my secretary on the intercom and say, Denise, please hold my calls. I could visibly see the client sit up straight and feel excited. The fact that I was giving them undivided attention and not going to be disturbed by any, any phone calls coming in because I was going to give that client undivided personal attention. If a call would come in on my cell phone during that interview, and I would say, just a second, I have to take this call, it's really important. I got a call from a prosecutor or some other individual, other lawyer. The client would understand, of course, but somewhat the special connection between me and the client was diminished because I took another call and it was as if the other person is more important than this particular conversation or meeting with this client. When I have a Shabbos table, and I explain to non-religious people that when I have Shabbos, it's not that I don't answer the phone. It's that I am with my most important clients, my, ch my wife and my children. And therefore, it's just not that I'm a religious or I don't answer the phone. I can't answer the phone. I'm with my most important clients, my most important people in my life, my children and my wife. And therefore, I just can't answer the phone. I have no time to answer the phone. I give them my undivided attention my undivided personal focus and attention and concentration to make them feel like they're important and that the convergence of Shabbos being important and my children being important on Shabbos makes them feel that Shabbos is important to them as well. The Torah tells us in this week's Parsha of Bahar, in Vayikra chapter 25, verse 3 and 4, For six years you may sow your field, and for six years you may prune your vineyard, and you may gather in its crop. But in the seventh year... It shall be as complete rest for the land, a Shabbos for Hashem. The Ramban explains that the Shemitah system of six years working the land and the seventh year the land goes free is comparable to the six days of the week that we work and the seventh day Shabbos we become personally free, spiritually free in our souls. Therefore, we have to see Shabbos as the ultimate, the goal of our week. The altar of Slobodka says the following. He says that the week is Chomer, the week is materialism, and the end of the week, Shabbos, is the Gemar Habriya. It's the end, the completion, the wholeness of the creation. During the week, the days of the week, are the raw materials, and Shabbos gives life, Surah, purpose. Surah and Chomer. The Rambam, the Rambam brings this idea of Chomer and Tzura. The Maharal brings this idea of Chomer and Tzura. The idea of materialism, which is Chomer, Chomerius, materialism, physicality, and Tzura, purpose, destiny, essence. So, says the Altar of Slobodka, the week is Chomer, is materialism, and we use the materialism to get to Shabbos, to get to the Tzura. And when we have Tzura, we have purpose, then we understand that all the six days of the week make sense because I worked all six days to get to Shabbos, to get to the destination, to arrive at a destination called Shabbos. Here's an example. If you have an intricate watch, a very expensive watch, and it has gears, it has mechanisms, it has accuracy to the nanosecond, and you see all the gears and you open it up, but the watch doesn't have a face, well then what would you say about that watch? It's an intricate, beautiful gear mechanism watch. It's very complex. It's wonderful. All the gears and mechanisms, I see them. But there's no face on the watch, which means the watch has no purpose. It has gears. It has mechanisms. It has intricacy. But it doesn't have a face. It doesn't tell time. And therefore, the chomer is the material of the watch. It's the gears and mechanisms of the watch. But the purpose of the watch is to tell time. And therefore, the face of the watch is the tsura, the purpose, the end product. The reason why you have all those gears is for to tell time. And therefore, without the face of the watch, without the hands, minute hands and, and second hands and hour hands, there's no purpose to all those gears. So too with Shabbos. The whole week we're working. Six days you shall work. And the seventh day you shall rest means six days you shall work on yourself and the seventh day you shall rest and reflect on the person that you become. And so therefore, Shabbos is the tachlis, 
the purpose. And therefore, we have to make our children realize that Shabbos is so beautiful. How? By including them in the spiritual process of Shabbos. It's not that we get to Shabbos and we're exhausted and we go to sleep by falling asleep in the soup and we leave the table and we're exhausted on the, on the couch. That happens. But before that happens, an hour and a half into the meal, but the first hour of the meal has to make Shabbos into an exciting, purposeful, enjoyable experience for the children so that they'll buy into the product, the idea that the end product, Shabbos, the thing we live for, being a Shabbos Jew, is so crucial, is so important, that it's so exciting. Abba and Ima make it exciting for me. How do we do that? The first thing is, when we give a blessing to the children, it must be warm and slow and loving. Yisimei chelokim kesara, rivka, rachel v'leya. Yisim chelokim chefrayim v'chemenasha. You give a hug, you hug your children and say, Yivarechecha Hashem v'yishmerecho, Ya'er Hashem panav alecha v'yichunecho, Yisa Hashem panav alecha v'yasim lecha. Shalom, say it out loud, say it slowly. As if you're giving them a blessing of God, you're giving them Hashem with a warm, loving, emotionally connecting moment at that Shabbos table. Secondly, give the bracha by the Shabbos candles. So they associate Shabbos with love. I always bring my children to the Shabbos candles and I give them this warm bracha and I give them a whisper in their ear and I say, you're so gentle, you're so giving, you're so chenedic, you're so helpful, you're a good person, I'm so proud of you. And sometimes I say nothing. I say, you know what, sometimes there's nothing to say. Just, I love you. Give them a whisper. Take that moment of, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, and give each child a special bracha. Give them a special whisper. Tell them who they are. By the Shabbos candles. That makes them feel like Shabbos means love. My tati, my mommy gave me love at the Shabbos table. They associate Shabbos with love. Next, make the Shabbos table exciting. Have quizzes. Not just the Parsha sheets, but come up with questions. There are Parsha books. Asha Torah has questions from all levels. The Asha Torah family website has a section for three-year-olds, for seven-year-olds, for 10-year-olds, for 13-year-olds, questions, stories that you can say over at the Shabbos table. Unbelievable, beautiful stories that make Shabbos come alive and engage them in discussion about Shabbos and give out chocolate lentils and chocolate prizes for kids who ask a question or answer a question. Make it fun, make it tasty, make it taste, taste sweet. Shabbos must taste sweet. Tamuru, taste the Shabbos. Next, make Zmiros into an exciting opportunity and a game. This side of the table, I'm going to say a word, David. Now sing me a song with the word David. David, Malach Yisrael, Okay, this side of the table, you get one point. This side. You sing a song with the word Yasis. Yasis, Salah, Okay, tied, one all, very good, excellent. Now anyone who sings a song with Kavana, so the kids go, Yasis, Salah, Yichel, Oh, two points. Uh, that's not fair. Okay, you'll get your turn. And I give another word to this side of the table. And they have a competition of who can sing with Kavana, who can sing a song with that word. So therefore, that's a song competition. Then we have charades. Act out a particular story from the Parsha or from the Torah itself. Like going to the mount, going to Harsinai, going... <sighs> Land, thunder, and lightning, and receiving the Torah in Harsinai. Or jumping in the water. Watch. Act it out and ask the children, who, what is this? What does this depict? What is this charade about? And they have to guess. And anyone who guesses gets a lentil or gets a special prize. Singing with them on your lap. Bring the children and sit them on your lap and sing Zmiros together. Enjoy the Shabbos table and pay attention to your children. Make them feel like the Shabbos is an important, valuable, creative, exciting time. That way we can draw them into the Shabbos, draw them into the tachlis of the Bria. They have to feel like Shabbos is an exciting, a special time for them. Not a time for Tati to sleep on the couch and to veg out. Rather, it's a time that we have to put in extra effort. And if we can take a 30-minute nap before Shabbos, a power nap before Shabbos, or in our car at 12 noon, just to be able to have extra energy before Shabbos, that's on us. We're exhausted at the Shabbos table and we don't make Shabbos so beautiful and exciting. What can I do? Yes, there is something you can do. You can rest up. You can take a break at half an hour at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock on Friday afternoon and take a power nap in your car at the office, or at home when you get home at 5 o'clock. It's a long Shabbos. Therefore, we have an obligation, an opportunity, responsibility to make Shabbos exciting by focusing on the children, making it a fun opportunity, 
And that way we can draw the children into understanding that they want to follow in our footsteps. They want to experience Shabbos as love. We have to treat them as if they're the focus of Shabbos. That the Shabbos is important as a focus for me, and they're the focus of the Shabbos. So make Shabbos the important value for them by making it exciting, fun. It's the place to be.